Good morning. Good morning, saints of God. Welcome into the house of the Lord this morning. How many excited to be here in the presence of the Lord? I'm just grateful and just thankful. It rained and it rained and it rained. It was a storm that hit the East Coast, but by the grace of God, we are here this morning. We checked in with some folks and they're here this morning. There may have been some damage to some properties and to some land and to some homes, but we thank God that God is with them this morning in the name of Jesus. And we are just glad to come into the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We want to first take an opportunity to say thank you, Lord. This is Perfect World Ministries' 19th anniversary. Yeah. 2003, Perfect World Ministries was birthed through our apostle and Pastor Casey and Pastor Frank Burton. And we are here in God's honoring grace of what he has done for our pastors. How about if we just take a stand of ovation just to bless God for what he's done, how he's brought us through, the shepherds he put us over, and just thanking God that we are here this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let us look to the Lord as we open our service in prayer. Amen? Eternal and Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you right now in Jesus' name. God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all our praises go to you, God. God, you are so faithful and committed. Lord, if we had a thousand times, we wouldn't be able to tell you how grateful and how thankful we are for you this morning, Lord. God, you sit high, you don't blow, you know everything that's going on in the earth around, Lord. God, storms came and they went, God, but God, you remain steadfast. You consistently were faithful over your people, Lord. And God, I just ask that you would touch them right now in Jesus' name. Send resources, send help. Send Jesus, send your arms and hands extended, Lord. Because somebody don't know where they're going to be, where they're going to stay, where their next food is coming from. They don't know if they're going to have health. Just, they don't know, God, but God, you know all things because, God, you were there in the midst of the storm. And God, you kept so many of them safe in the eye of the storm, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, God, we thank you, God, that your people will gather around them this morning, good Lord, and that they will just hold up their arms today, God, and that they will come from the north, the south, and the east, and the west, God, that they will know that they're not forgotten because, God, you love them, Lord, and you understand, Lord. So meet them at the need, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you for gathering us here today. We thank you for providing for us a place to come where we can worship you, we can praise you, we can exalt you, we can thank you, we can bless you. But Lord, we want you here with us. We want you among us. So we invite the King of kings and the Lord of lords into this service this morning. We say come in as we bow before the King. Come in and have a seat, Lord. Receive our praise. Receive our worship. Receive our sacrifice, God. Of coming in. Let the fruit of our lips just bless you this morning because you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you have sent us a word today, God, to revive us, to continue to keep us moving forward, Lord, because you are a dwelling place. You are a portion. You are a portion from generation to generation to generation. Your mercies endure forever. We have a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving, Lord, and if there's anything in us that will stand between you and us, God, we ask that you remove it. Because, Lord, we didn't get everything right. We didn't say everything on time. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can come before you and confess and that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all righteousness. So, Lord, create in us a clean heart. Renew within us the right spirit this morning, Lord. That we sin not against you, Lord. Cast us never away from your presence. But draw us close, God, as we would draw close to you, Lord. And we say, have your way in this service today, Lord. Let us come in one way, but, Lord, let us not leave the same way that we came in. Transform and renew us, God, that we will be better, that we will be greater, that we will be mega, that we will be more on fire for you, Lord. Lord, you are our first love, God. Bring us back to that place where we loved you. And we loved you, God. That we loved you and that we met you, God. That we reflect on your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord, of what you brought us through. You brought us a mighty long way, God. And we just want to take this opportunity in our service today to acknowledge you in our praise and our worship and our giving and our communion. Lord, we just want to lift you up today. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Touch those that are on social media, those that are in their homes. Let them hear your voice, see your face, even where they need God. Because, God, we know that all it takes is one touch. All it takes is one touch from you, God. 
and their lives would never be the same, Lord. So draw them close this morning as well. Have your way, God, in the hospitals, in the nursing homes, on the streets, and those that are in their cars. Have mercy on them this morning, Lord. Draw them close to you, God, that they will feel your presence. Because we know in your presence there's fullness of joy. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's miracle working power. There's resurrection power, God. Do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And we will carefully give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Glory to the name of the Lord. We're excited to be here today. It's 19 years. mighty things in Perfect Bull Ministries and he's continuously moving in and through her Perfect Bull Ministries and in his people and we just, as I said, we want to thank our pastors for just shepherding us all this time. Amen. As we continue our service, we want to get ready for praise and worship but before we do that, tithes and offering is the same way that we have done in the past several months. We do have a box in the back and those that want to give their offering and just maybe you want to raise up your hand and need an envelope or anything one of our leadership will make sure that you have an envelope. If you decide that you want to pay by social media or send it by mail, you can send it to perfectfullministries.org and we do have a site set up where you can pay your tithes and offering online. If you mail it in, it's P.O. Box 823, Bear, Delaware 19701. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us get ready for praise and worship as the praise and worship team will come forth at this time. Amen.
available to us. Yes. He's brought us to this time, at this point. We bless God for it. Yes. And we don't want to hold back any praise, any admiration. We don't want to hold back our thanksgiving. We don't want to hold back our gratitude because God is worthy. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 There is no greater. There is no greater. No greater name. I know. No greater peace. I know. No greater hope, I know. No greater joy, I know. Yes. It comes from no place but in Him, in Christ Jesus. And so we're grateful for it. Amen. 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 And we just want to celebrate God today, right? Yes. Everybody want to celebrate? Yes. 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 Oh. Right.
true and living God, the all in one. Amen. 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 So I'm so glad, amen, David. I'm so glad that our search is over. Hallelujah, God. We have found the true and living God. He is Lord of all. Amen.
And in that particular uh, message, I shared some valuable takeaways with you, and I, sh I continue to share them as we examine the life of Gideon. And when I was before you last, we were examining Gideon's pursuit of the Midianite princes, Zeb and Oreth, who were killed by the men of Ephraim. And then he was in pursuit of Zeba and Zamona, who were kings, Midianite kings. And when he arrived uh, and asked the men of Sukkah uh, to feed his men, who were exhausted from battle, they arrogantly refused. And so he went on and he asked the men at Peniel to feed his weary fighting men, and they refused. So basically they were saying to him, if you have not yet caught them, then why do we need to feed you? And basically, go catch them first and we'll consider it. And so they arrogantly refused to feed the fighting men, something which was within their ability to do. And so Gideon and his men, still exhausted, continued in pursuit. And I told you back then, and I share again with you now, still exhausted, continue in your pursuit of the things of God. Amen. And so I want to just, by way of review, share with you these few points from that message. More battles to fight. Number one, this is review. I'm going to get right into the word, and I pray that if you if you feel like there's something more you need, go back and listen on on the um, the channel, the YouTube channel. Number one, people will sometimes make your divine assignment about them. Number two, people will benefit from your obedience to God, and yet will refuse to support to give you support or give up their resources to support your efforts. Three, people will question or challenge you to demonstrate to them that you will indeed do what God called you to do or that you will experience the victory or the success that God promised you. And number four is, don't allow yourself to be offended by the action or inaction of people. Remain focused on the assignment God has given you and annihilate the enemy. Annihilate the enemy. Annihilate the enemy. Wow. So that, that's by way of review. So now we want to enter into our message for today. And I pray you lean in and pay attention because I'm not going to be before you long. But this message is critical for believers as it pertains to process or outcome. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we say, and I have said for almost a year now, the outcome is firmly decided by God. So you don't even have to make it happen. God has already firmly decided that. Your job and my job is to willingly and obediently and with focus go through the process. Okay? Now, if you want to title for today's message, it's Process or Outcome, Vigilance and Victory. Vigilance and I am Victory. That's today's message topic. So we will go to, and it's just one part of Gideon's process that we're going to look at today. But I promise you, if you pay attention, you will know what you need to do and what you do not need to do when you are pursuing the, the cause, the, 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 uh, the victory, the ministry, uh, whatever it is that God is causing you and calling you to pursue, this is going to be important in your process. Amen? Amen. So let's look at Judges 8. Now remember, I just told you from our last message in this series, more battles to fight. Not only did Gideon have to, and his 300 men, had to kill some of the, kill the fighting men on the battlefield and in the camp with some unorthodox, supernatural weapons, but there were some who tried to flee. They tried to get away. 
And God said, you will defeat them all as one man. And so the princes of Midian and two of the kings of Midian, they started to run away from the scene in effort to get away. How many know if you let the enemy get away, you give him the opportunity to go and regroup and, and recalibrate and reorganize and, and build his number to come back stronger? Yes. How many understand that? Yes. That's right. So it is critical and essential that Gideon pursue that, e that evil, pursue those princes and pursue those kings yes. to take them out. Stop allowing things to linger. Come on. Ungodly things Come on. to linger. Generational curses to linger. Uh oh. People who mean you no good to linger. Uh oh. Why are you hanging out with somebody you know that does not mean you well? Amen. Why are you coexisting in the presence of people who are plotting for your demise? Stop lingering. Stop hanging out with them. Stop allowing them access. Thank God. Allowing access. Gideon was told by God that he was going to destroy the oppressor who had oppressed them for seven years. And this was his time. And so he started out and he, through the, the power of God, destroyed everybody that was in that camp. And the two princes and the two kings that thought they were getting away, the two princes were killed by the men of Ephraim. But those two kings, Gideon pursued them and he took them out. And then those arrogant, obstinate people at Zucca, mm -hmm. And Peniel, he went back and dealt with them too. Because they refused arrogantly to assist in the plan of God. So that brings me to our message for today. Turn with me to Judges. And what I will tell you is, Zeba and Zamuna, the kings of Midian, Gideon killed and took them out. Mm -hmm. And right after that, verse 22, mm -hmm. Judges 8, 22 is where we're going to land today. And it reads, Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son and your grandson also. For you have saved us from the hand of Midian. I want to preach just a few moments from a topic. Process or outcome. Vigilance and victory. Vigilance, and I'm going to get right to point number one. Vigilance and discernment are as important after a victory as it is while you are in pursuit of victory. Amen. Come on, talk about it. I will say it again. Vigilance and discernment yes. are as important after a victory as it is while you are in pursuit of victory. So Gideon had pursued and killed the Midianite king Zeb and Zamora, and the men that sucked up in Peniel, who by questioning their questioning of Gideon, and their arrogant refusal to help him, those men sealed their fate. Fresh off of the victory that God promised Gideon, we read in the text that the men of Israel were, and since I wasn't there, and I don't know the full context, context and the, the message the Bible does not say clearly, they were either asking, demanding, or suggesting that Gideon now rule over them. Did we not just read that in verse 22? Let's read it again. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son and your grandson also, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian. Not only were they asking Gideon to rule over them, 
they were asking that generations of Gideon's descendants rule over them. Mm. It said, you and your grandson, you, your son, and your grandson rule over us because you saved us from our oppressor. So why? Because they were saved from the hand of the Midianites who had oppressed them for seven years, they either suggested, demanded, or they asked Gideon to rule over them. So in their minds, they believed Gideon saved them. However, the text tells us that God saved them. So in reality, Gideon was merely the instrument that God used to secure the victory. So this leads to some very valuable points. So I hope you lean in and stay with me. First point, Israel is amnesia. Uh-oh, uh-oh. In other words, Israel has amnesia. Come on. Because after seven years of being oppressed, you now ask Gideon to rule over you. So there's a gap in their collective memory regarding who really saved them. It is God and not Gideon, fresh off of the victory, Israel forgot God. Jesus. Just that quick. Again. Come on. With 300 men versus thousands, with some lamps and some, some, some torches and some trumpets, and you forgot that God did it just that quick? Wow. And sadly, this is not the first time nor is it the last time when you read the biblical text does Israel's amnesia show up in scripture. And that's sad. Here's the next point. Their gratitude was grossly misplaced. Instead of expressing gratitude and rightly attributing the victory to God, they attributed the victory to Gideon, thereby asking, demanding, or suggesting that Gideon rule over them. So here's a nugget for you. People tend to have selective memory. Uh oh. People tend to have selective memory. Yes. They tend to remember only that which feels good or feels right or beneficial to them in the moment. So in the euphoria, that feeling of well-being, that feeling of elation, that feeling of, oh, wow, we have been delivered from the hands of our oppressors, in that feeling of euphoria that follows victory, people become overzealous and ask the man or suggest that we become to them what only God should be to us. I hope you're paying attention. This ultimately causes no one to be put out of place. This causes one to be out of place and out of the will of God. Because God did not tell Gideon that he would rule the people. God did not say that. So when you're moving in your ministry and you help someone, you pray for them, they get the answer, they get the deliverance, they get the job, they get the healing, don't allow them to ask you, suggest to you anything that's outside of the will of God. Come on. Just because you were the vessel and the tool and the instrument that was used, don't move off the rock. So after a mighty move of God, after God secured the victory, we need to remain vigilant and discerning. Pay attention, people of God. Because here's the thing. I guess it may be human nature, but it seems that we often want to breathe a sigh of relief and relax our stance yes. after a victory. Yes. Uh-oh. Yes. 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 Come on, people of God. Let's be honest. We want to, whoo, we want to have a seat. We want to sit down. We want to lay back. We want to stop paying attention. We want to stop looking around. We want to stop observing. 
that's the time you need to really, really stay focused. Yes. Come on here. Yes. Amen. Yes. You see what I know about humans, because I happen to be one, <laughs> is that humans like to celebrate after a win. Uh -huh. And even the culture, even the culture promotes this whole winning thing. Yes. Winning. But think about this. We like to celebrate the victory. In fact, people feel entitled to celebrate themselves, or they feel entitled to be celebrated after a victory. Yes. That's right. Yes. And it occurs all around us. It occurs around us in sports and in politics and, and, and in collective and personal victories yes. won despite adversity. So when you've had a hard go of it, when you've tried to pass that test, I don't know how many times, and you <laughs> finally pass it, you want to have a victory. You have a victory, you want to celebrate. Yes, fair enough. When you've been going against all kinds of obstacles and hindrances and, and closed doors and locked doors and you nailed down windows, and you get through to the place that you feel that God is leading you, you want to celebrate because you feel like you have a victory. Yes. Right? Yes. Is it just me? <laughs> no, Pastor. You preach it well. It is in these very moments yes. that vigilance yes. and discernment yes, yes. are as important yes. after that victory yes. as they are when you are pursuing it. Some of us have the ability to, to move with laser focus. Yes. You know that business you wanted to start? And you did that thing step by step by step. You lined up everything you needed to line up. Business proposal. You got everything that you needed. Business license. You needed a place for it. You got some suppliers and some customers. Step by step by step by step. Vigilant. Had your brain opening up, going in, and people were coming, and your name is getting out, and people were. You still need to be as vigilant now as you were then. Amen. Because it doesn't always come easy. Oh, remember, you wanted to be a wife. You wanted to be married. You wanted a husband, right? And all the things you did in vigilance and all of the things you did while you were pursuing that relationship and you wanted to, to be that good thing that this man found and you were getting yourself together and you, you're learning how to cook and you're learning how to take care of a home and you're learning how to you know, be responsible with your finances. Same amount of vigilance. After you say I do. Come on. Same thing, man. Same thing. Oh, you saw her. She was fine. She was fly. She was fierce. And you pursued her. And you followed her. Ooh. You, you slid into her DM. Yeah, and you yeah. wanted to talk to her. And you wanted to let her know that you're the one that you want, you the one that you want her to be with. And then you talked all this stuff about how much vision you got and where you're going and what you're doing and where you work. And now you got it. Same amount of vision. Uh-oh. You don't sit down on the job. That's right. You got the prize. That's right. 33 years. Earn your key. Oh, good. Earn your key. Earn your right. Whoa. We ain't gonna in good times, in bad times, in up downs, in down times. Yes. 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 When she cute and doing good and when she don't feel so good. Yeah. Huh? Looking so cute. Huh? <laughs> When she when she is that what, I don't know what they call them now because if I start saying it the young people are gonna say past they don't use that word anymore. <laughs> but anyway, but when she's that dime piece, and Woo! all of a sudden she's a quarter. Uh oh, fifty fifty. Okay. <laughs> you celebrated it, right? That's right. Don't stop celebrating now. Wow. Well, you have to be as vigilant. Yes. You have to be as attentive. Jeez. You have to be as locked in. You have to be as focused. Because right while right, you think you got it on lock and you the man, you that boy, you that girl, somebody else is... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Mm -hmm. Keeping it out. Uh -oh. yep. Checking her all the way out. Checking him all the way out. Mm. Pastor, me going to shout you down. You preaching good. You stop doing. Oh, yeah. You probably might get yourself hurt, Pastor. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to step up. Okay, but, but here's my thing. When you've already won, you shouldn't have to step up. You that's should already. Well, 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 
Well, that's true. When you've already won, you shouldn't have to step up. You should be up. Amen. We ain't going to shout you down, Pastor, but you're preaching good. All right, Father. Well, we get up. <laughs> so vigilant and discernment are as important after a victory as it is when you are in pursuit. My of God. Amen. So what am I saying to you? Don't get caught up in the hype of the celebration. Jesus. Don't get caught up in the hype. Because everybody loves a winner until they lose. Mm. That's right. We winning until we're not. That's right. And the truth of the matter is, no one wants to lose. Have you ever observed the behavior of people towards an individual or a group of individuals who experience loss? Have you ever paid attention to what yes. happens? Yes. We lose favor. Absolutely. Yeah. So, if you in a stadium? They leave before it's all over. Oh, yeah, they do. Yes, yes. If it looks like you're going to lose, yeah. yes, speak up. they move on quickly. Mm. In fact, people walk away if they even have an inkling that this is not going to end well. Yeah. And not only that, they disassociate themselves when there's loss. And what's more disheartening is that few people will join in to help when they feel a loss is imminent. Mm -hmm. That's right. People, people flood the court. And I'm using sports as an analogy, but it's not just that. People flood the court when you win. Mm -hmm. They'll bust through security when you win. Mm -hmm. They'll flood the field when you win. You'll be like, how did they all get down there? Because you won. They were already plotting to flood the place. Jumping gates. Yeah. When yes. you lose, when you lose, you want to know who's really in your corner? Uh oh. Look around you after you lose. Uh oh. Who's there? Who's standing there with you? Mm, who's there? It's good. This is good. Real quiet now. It's yeah. good. Because you got like what? 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 50,000 friends on Facebook. But when you lose, mm -hmm. come on, tell it. Right there, man. Tell it. You're going viral because of something you tweeted. But when you lose, uh oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And this is what I find interesting. And I'm going to say this before I, I share this next point. I'm not, I don't have much longer. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> I remember when my boys were playing high school football. And I don't always talk about sports because the, the other pastor you had talks about sports all the time. <laughs> but I want to share this point. Well, I remember when my boys were playing high school football. And they had a season where they were 12 and up. Uh -oh. And they went to the championship. And everybody was excited, and everybody was cheering, and everybody had this, we brought home another dub mentality, and they were so excited. But that next season, mm -hmm. after every game, and even the ones they lost, I stood at the locker room and I waited. I said, I shouted and jumped and, and, and danced with you when you won, and I'm going to stand here. Hey. That's right. And can I tell you, there were like a handful of people, a few mamas and a few dads, standing there waiting for them when they come out the locker room with their head hanging up. Look around when you lose. Come on. Look around when things don't go so well. Come on. Find out who's in your corner for real. Who has a word of encouragement? Who comes to, to pick you up and dust oh, you off? Oh Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Which leads me to my next point. It's so unfortunate that the attention span of human beings uh -oh. has decreased in this technological age. <laughs> yes. It has decreased to a point where it's almost the attention span of a, of a fruit fly. Yeah. 
Somebody said, that's too long. <laughs> and here's the thing. The attention span of humans has decreased in such a way that a win today quickly becomes old news tonight. New cycle. New cycle. And so victories that are secured, and hear me, because I'm just about done. Victories that are secured through long and hard-fought battles are often reduced to a 15-second highlight or a 30 to 60 second highlight compilation, yep. which only shows the parts of the battle that the editor yep. deems important. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Sound good, Pat. It, it's reduced to that. So there's one person that decides that this is important, this is pivotal, and this is entertaining. Mm. And so they reduce it to that. And so in some ways, we have become accustomed to celebrating the win and only remembering the highlights, Deacon Nolan. Yes, ma'am. Do y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. You see it every day. Sports 10 and top, top 10. You see it every day. With this type of conditioning, we miss. With this type of conditioning, we forget. With this type of conditioning, we gloss over the mistakes that were made. We miss, we forget, we gloss over the setbacks during the course of that battle. We miss, we forget, we gloss over the injuries that were incurred during the course of that battle. We miss, we forget, we gloss over the casualties that happened during the battle. We miss, we forget, and gloss over the strategies that were utilized during the course of that fight. Well, and we miss and forget and gloss over the all-out brawl because we down in the muck right now. We fighting for real. Yes. You miss all of that in the thirty or a fifteen-second highlight. Jesus. And when you do that, when we do that, we keep condensing everything down, we don't get the full picture. Uh-oh. So how are you going to know what it, what it did? Listen, how are you going to know? How does one know how to become victorious if one does not understand that there's going to be some missteps and some mistakes on this yes, journey? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Say that again. How does one understand how to become victorious if one does not understand that they're, they're, they're not going to know how to overcome the mistakes and the missteps within the context of this battle? Come on now. How does one become victorious when they don't understand how to remain focused and committed in the face of the setback? Mm. Anybody ever had a setback? Everything was going along fine. I was just flowing. I was on my way. And then all of a sudden something happened. But because I'm watching the highlight reel, I don't even know how to come back from that. Well. <laughs> how does one become victorious if one does not understand that I got to fight this battle even if I'm injured? Yes. Right. Yes. 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 And we have so many people in our culture, and it's not even just young people, I can't even say that. Oh, I'm over it. I'm done with it. I'm not, I can't handle it. My stress is too great. You're owning something that ain't even yours. That's right. Sorry. I'm sorry. How does one become victorious if one does not understand that in this battle there's going to be some casualties? There's going to be some losses. Uh -oh. There are going to be some casualties. We talked about this thing called life, and now we're talking about this thing called uh, uh, a faithful walk. Oh, there's going to be some casualties. And if you mind yourself with God, some stuff's got to die. It's going to die. And who should die? Those generational curses. Come on. Those demons. Come on. Those hindrances. Those Come on. traps. Those stands. Yes. Those assignments. Those aging set to yes. trip you up. Yes. Those aging set to make you feel depressed. Those are the things should die. Yes. But if you're watching that highlight, Bill, how would you know that? Uh-oh. Yes. Right. Die. Just die. Oh, you see it? Uh -huh. 
<laughs> God said hi, like, no, I'm really dating myself. So if you're watching TikTok, how to do life, I'm going to tell you right now, you better, you better think, it, think it through. What's the one where you, I don't even know, I don't know this stuff because I, I got recommended by one of my sisters in Christ who said, you just need to get on social media. What's the one where you put it on and it disappears? Instagram. Instagram. Instagram stories. Instagram stories. So you put it on. What's the one? Y'all know the one you put on after a while. It's not there anymore. Instagram stories. Okay, so so let me ask you a question. If you win the battle and you go, what is it? Thirty minutes? Is it a whole day? Twenty-four hours? Twenty-four hours. Oh, so if you go in the twenty-fourth hour in the first minute, where are you gonna get your help from? Great question. Great question. <laughs> oh, but it was on. Oh, sorry. Gone. It's gone. Gone. I can get it back though. <laughs> we ain't living our life like that. I can get it back though. How does one become victorious if one does not know what strategies to use? Yes. yes. What yes. weapons to use? No. You can't walk to a fight and be unarmed. Yes. Amen. Mm. Right. You know it real good. Yeah. You can. You can. That's right. All vulnerable and out in the open. Yes. And unarmed. Yes. That's right. Preach, Pastor. That's good. And so, how does one become victorious if one does not understand? What the requirements are to engage in battle. Yes. Amen. 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 And I thought about it, and there's so many different examples, but I thought about it because I thought about our culture, right? I thought about us as people of color in America, right? Yes. And I thought about the civil rights movement. And we have a lot of people Especially younger people, and I'm not hating on young people because I love y'all. Amen. I do. Amen. And I'm not even saying it's you all. But I've heard and I've experienced and I've witnessed young people running around talking about they have the right to do this and they have the right to do that. And I'm fierce and I'm a boss and I'm a this and I'm a that. And they don't even understand or even have a clue what it's for them to be a boss, to be fierce. And then the stuff that they're attributing to their rights is a bunch of nonsense and ridiculousness that has nothing to do with the life of a believer. And what I mean by that is you don't have the right to go and just flip, flam, flip, flip, flip all over the place and call it music. You don't have the right to go and strip down like you in the bathroom and everybody get to see you. That's not rights. That's not doing anything great. When you don't understand what it took for you to do, to be able to do the things that you can do, how do you, how do you, yes. how do yes. you do this when you don't understand or even have a clue what it took for you to sit anywhere you want on the bus? Yes. When you acting a fool on the bus? Yes. How do you, how do you understand, how do you, and you don't have a clue what it took for you to be able to live in that neighborhood? Yes. How do you how do you do this? How do you how do you walk around talking about my rights and you don't even understand what it took for you to even be considered as an applicant on your job? How do you how do you beat your chest about your rights when you don't even understand that it ain't been that long ago, as the kids say, bruh, that you were even not able to even enter onto the campus of that school. That's right. Talked Why about that. We got HBCUs, y'all. Because everybody wasn't taking us. There are high schools right here in Delaware that were the only one that serviced us. There were places that we weren't even allowed to go. There are buildings that still stand when we were supposed to go in the back of the building. But you beating your chest about you this and you that and what your rights are, you don't even understand what it took. To be able to walk through the front door or to sit at the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not just 
our culture. I think it's just Americans in general. There's an entitlement. There's a, 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 a thought of, you know, I get to do whatever I want. How many people are buried in Arlington Cemetery? How many people are buried in veteran cemeteries all over the place that went off to lands unknown to fight so that we don't have the, 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 the tragedies and, 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 the, and the killing on our soil for you to be so flip and so rude and so uncaring. How much blood was shed? And I'm almost done. Let's look at verse 23. Romans 8, 23. I'm sorry, Romans, Judges 8, 23. And here's Gideon's response. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you. And my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. That's right. And this is my last point. You know that no is, we always say no is an anointed word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to have your no in place. Well. For people who are uh, proposing that you do something out of the will of God. And here it is. <clears throat> Refuse to participate in the petitions, the promotions, and the processes of people. Refuse to participate in the petitions, the promotions, and the processes of people. You ever get somebody who's always coming in, they're trying to promote their agenda, they're trying to get you to get on board with it because they know you have access or you have a platform or you have insight or you have connections. And they always come in like a salesperson because they're trying to get you to buy into their stuff. They're trying to get you to be a part of something, some scheme they got going on. Because you were anointed minister, Keisha, uh -oh. and because God is uh -oh. giving you this business, people always want to latch on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. On the back end. Use. On the back end. Always coming with an agenda. Yep. Yep. Vigilant and discerning. And I declare and decree that from this moment forward, God's going to sharpen that thing on you so tight. Yes. And I'm going to come here to come to walk in your direction. Yes, God. And you're not bearing. The word of God. Yes, God. The purpose of God, the plan of God, the love of God. Always somebody trying to call you. Always somebody trying to get in touch with you. Always somebody trying to connect with you. Always somebody trying to get access to yeah. something you have. And they ain't got nothing to do with God. It's all about their promotion and, and their platform. Mm -hmm. Let them build their own. So here it is. If God has not ordained it, don't entertain it. Mm. And I'm done. I'm done. Let's go. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you because you are so well, full, able to do everything that you purposed and planned for us, God. So, Lord, as we go forth, God, we will be vigilant and discerning in everything in our lives, God. If we don't see your hand at work, if we don't hear your voice urging us on, if we don't hear the Holy Spirit moving, if we don't feel Jesus praying, we will not entertain those things, God. But we will be vigilant after every victory. We will be discerning after every victory. Because, God, you know that you have plans for us to prosper us, to do us good and not harm, God. And we will keep our attention towards you. That you will continue to work the work in us that you have started, God. And it is a good work, God. So, Lord, let us not be lax. Let us not get complacent. But let us move forward in vigilance to do what you've called us to do, God. Because with every act of obedience, every act of commitment, every act of trust and faith in you, God, you give more. When you can trust us, God, you give us more. Yes. And I'm not talking material things, God. I'm talking about the things of the kingdom of God. You give us more when you can trust us. So, Lord, let us be worthy of that trust. And let us move 
according to your purpose and plan. In Jesus' name I pray. I declare it over the people of God. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Yeah. Hey, my baby, she showed me preach. Vigilance, vigilance and victory. Uh, today was, Pastor Tixon gave some very good points. Make sure that you review the um, YouTube and make sure that you see it. Um, this is our 19th year. Uh, we're celebrating it very quietly. Not a whole bunch of pomp and circumstance. And next year, I promise you, it'll be 20, we're going to do a lot bigger. Yeah. We're going to have a different venue, different speakers, or whatever. But this year, we just wanted to do what we've always done at Perfect Will. We don't try to be extravagant or boisterous. We just want to make sure that you get the word. So a couple things real quick, so you'll understand. Somebody say, well, y'all celebrated 19 years, and who did y'all have come speak, and where did y'all go with it? But we learned some stuff. Amen. We learned some stuff. Vigilance and victory. Let me say this too, 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 so that you're aware, something that you can relate to. This is what, fall? Yeah. And please, if you understand, during the summertime, trees are what, green? Yeah. And you see the leaves, and green represents life and growth. But when you look at the leaves now, this fall season, God's trying to tell you something. They're yellow, they're red, they're orange, and they're vibrant, they're brown. So even with that, God is saying, pay attention to what I'm doing because the fall season is a time of falling off. Please hear me. Let me, let me break this down first. The colors red, vibrant, when you see those, what does red signify in the spirit? Stop. Some of y'all need to stop what y'all been doing. Some of y'all need to stop what Pastor Tixon said. Stop with all these crazy relationships and business ventures. You need to stop and think about it. Yellow is caution. Yellow means you better slow down, right? As well as orange is caution too. Caution means there's danger ahead and brown is dead. Something's dying. So in this season, some things are going to fall off because they have to. Some relationships are gonna fall off. But it ain't even about other people. Some of your attitudes need to fall off. Some of your old mindset needs to fall. Some of your thinking, thinking needs to fall off. Why? Because think about it. 19 years, right? Nobody talked about this. We always uh, we get to those numbers. Eight is new beginnings, and five is grace. We like all those good numbers. Well, 19 is not a good number. 19, the overall meaning for 19 means barren. And after bearing, it means ashamed. And it means naked. Stop and think about where we are right now. Those trees that you put up around your swimming pool so nobody can see you, they're falling off and now you're going to be exposed. So in this season of barrenness, 19, God is going to expose some things about you and other relationships that you may have. But don't get mad at God and don't get all in the dumps or whatever because after 19 comes 20. And 20 signifies holy, tried, and approved. After your dead season, after I isolate you, after I make you barren, after I strip you of all of your pride, then I'm going to build you back up. Because if in the fall, we have spring, right? Comes winter and it's spring. Winter is really dead because there ain't nothing going on that we know about. But underneath, God is already doing something. And then spring comes, so be very aware. So, 19 is barren, right? What's the day? October? What's two? Pastor Tasha said all her sermon. What does two represent? To divide, to separate, to discern. Start discerning the people that you're around. Start discerning the business ventures that you have. Start discerning the place that you're in right now. Because God said you got to, it's time to separate some stuff. I'm telling y'all, in, 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 in numerology and, and all these things that we talk about are all in here today. 
God said you walk away with this thing today because tomorrow springtime is coming. And when spring comes, all that stuff that you thought was dead, all the stuff that you thought was underneath the surface, God says, guess what? Sister, uh, Sister Dolores, you know, you go through some things, but God is going to build you up. Sister Lois, you're going through some things right now. But you know what? And don't trouble don't last always, y'all. So 19 is the time of barrenness. 20 is right around the corner. 20, we will be holy. We'll be tried and we'll be approved. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have to celebrate next year. Bree, y'all know how we do. We're going to go somewhere. Bree will be standing at the door with a tuxedo. But now she got Saquon. Saquon will be right there greeting. And, and Bryce will be taking pictures. And, and we'll be doing the whole things that 19 years. 19 years. Where's, where's Marcus? Perfect will been around longer than Marcus been born. 19 years. Uh, Bryson was a little kid. I got videotapes of Bryson playing little thing. Running around. Pastor said, Pastor, leave them alone. All right. I'm going to enjoy them. <laughs> but all I want to say is this. And I'm sure that I speak for Pastor Tixie. She can come up and say whatever she wants to afterwards if she wants to. But as pastors, you guys make us so very proud. You have made us proud. And it's not like we have not, it has not come without tests. Amen. We've gone through some tests. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When you go through tests, like Pastor Tacey said, everything she said, that's why I was getting so excited. When we've gone through tests and we've gone through losses, all I had to do was stop and look up and see who was still standing there. Amen. Amen. And it has been you and you and you and you who have always stood there. Y'all never left. Y'all never went anywhere. It's the same way as parents. Win, lose, or draw, we always gonna be in your corner. So again, make sure so that, that, you, that you think about it. So thank you. We love y'all. Y'all have no idea. And we don't change. We're not gonna change because of a group of people. We're gonna do what God says. We're going to do what God says. Minister Keisha, we had this conversation. Pastor Takes, you just hit it on the nose. You don't change because of people are acting crazy. You keep doing what you're doing. Amen. And they're acting crazy because of the anointing on your life. Amen. But when you keep doing what you're doing, watch God elevate you to where you're supposed to be. And those people, just like the season, will start falling off. Yes. And God will discern, divide, and judge yes. who you need to be connected with. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let's give God a hand, praise, stand to your feet. 19 years! Woo! We got an announcement here with uh, our brother Darren with the youth service. You can stop that, baby. With this youth service, that's all right. I'll get it. I'll get it. Don't worry about it. You're technologically challenged. Don't worry about it. But God is good.